I'm so glad you can join me, Sarah Bansimer, as I have a chance to talk with Francis Worthington, the author of Abraham, One God, Three Wives, Five Religions. Francis, I have to ask you, what makes Abraham different than every other man? I think the most important thing about Abraham is that he's our forefather, um, and he's the forefather of really everyone in the world, although we don't really think of him that way. But one of the things we've learned about genetics is that we're all related. But he was also the father of monotheism, the first messenger of God to speak about the fact that there's only one indivisible God, that idols don't hold any power. It must have been uh, really delightful to weave this together and uh, find points of agreement in religion. It is. It's wonderful to see how all these different stories dovetail into one huge narrative. Um, it's nonfiction, but of course we don't know every single fact, so I would say this is a historical narrative that is nonfiction, but it's dusted with the spices of perhaps and maybe. Yes, spices. I found it a very good read. I enjoyed it very much. Well, thank you. I know that for decades you've been involved in interfaith dialogue, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering what the different points of view are about Abraham, and do some religions have a, a, some knowledge that others don't? Well, that's a good question, because I have found that to be true. Um, for instance, uh, Muslims know that Abraham traveled to Arabia where Hagar and Ishmael were living and that he and Ishmael built a house of worship. But most Christians, most Jews are not aware of that. Jews, on the other hand, know that there was a third wife whose name was Keturah. But in general, Christians and Muslims and often Baha'is are not aware of that. So everybody has a piece of the story. It's fascinating. An historical puzzle. Sorry. It is a historical puzzle. What span of time are you talking about in your book? Well, amazingly, I'm talking about 4,000 years. It's an incredibly long period of time. Abraham was born about 4,000 years ago. Yes, and it sounds like he had a very full life if he had three wives. Well, he did. It must have been a lot of drama going on in that household because not only did he have three wives, but the wives all had children. Now, Sarah and Hagar only had one child each that we know of, but Keturah had six sons. So following all those different children um, is a great part of the story. So there's a huge family tree that leads to many places. To many, many places all around the world. And the 4,000-year span also covers five religions? It does cover five religions. So these are consecutive religions? They weren't all happening at the same time? That's right. They're consecutive r religions, which is why I think of this as a historical soap opera, because we get a drama about every thousand years with the coming of a new messenger and a new religion. So we get sort of, to watch each episode, it's helpful to know who came before and who came after. Does it seem like they're in agreement, these messengers? Absolutely. That's the fascinating thing about that. They all affirm each other, and each of them tells something about Abraham that the others didn't. So there's always something to uncover. A great family story. It is a great family story. It's a, yeah, I think of it as a drama for all ages. And Abraham was preaching teachings of? He was teaching monotheism. He was saying that idols don't have any power. Because up until then, mankind had, by and large, worshipped the uncreated essence of the universe through idols, thinking that these idols, made out of clay, sculpted out of stone, actually had power. So they were um, sending their prayers and things to uh, metal or wooden physical objects as a point to the great spirit. That's exactly right. And so he was smashing idols, quite literally, did this as a child, smashing them to prove that they themselves had no power. Ironically, his own father was a sculptor of idols, so he and That's his father... It's funny you would say that because I was going to think, of course he'd be unpopular. He's putting people out of business. Yes. Tradesmen would be losing their livelihood. That's right. He was threatening his own father's livelihood because his father was a well-known idol maker. So here is this upstart of a son who's saying, look, Dad, you can make these guys, you can break these guys. They can't have any power in themselves. And his father is saying, I don't, I don't want to hear this. Be gone from me. His father threatens to stone him if he doesn't leave. I didn't know that. No, it's really heartbreaking. One of the wonderful things about Abraham is that although his story is full of drama, full of tragedy, full of threats, um, the promise is that his descendants will be blessed by him and that it, they will cover the earth like dust. So I would see this as a, be the beginning of a fulfillment of the promise that was made to Abraham. That indeed, someday his descendants would learn to tolerate one another, perhaps even love one another. Well, that's a very happy note. You know, that makes me want to go to some interfaith meetings and uh, meet some other people of other religions and uh, get a dialogue going. Yeah, I think you should. Thanks for writing such a wonderful book. Well, thank you for having me here. Oh, it was a pleasure.